All right, so we've been making some good progress in our Sudoku solver. We've been uh, adding different tricks, solving different different squares. The thing I want to work on in this tutorial is, if you look here, we kind of have an arbitrary number of times we check puzzle. Basically, how it works is we uh, we set up the puzzle, and then this check puzzle, uh, which is right here it goes through and it solves these steps right so first it checks rows and columns and then it does our little box trick so but and we you know we will run it once and maybe we solve one square well that will give us information about other squares so we run it a second time again that might solve another square and so we just keep running it uh, what we want to do is we want to do a loop we want to just keep running check puzzle until the entire puzzle is solved now, obviously, right now, we don't have all the tricks set up that the puzzle will get solved, but that's how we're going to be doing it. So we're going to be using this unsolved variable. Remember, every time that we solve a square, that variable goes down. So we'll put that in a while loop. So we're going to say while unsolved is greater than zero. So while there's an unsolved square, we're going to run this check puzzle. So that's going to give us an infinite loop right now because we never solved the actual puzzle and let's just run that to uh, to see that that's an infinite loop so clear make and there we're now in an infinite loop so control C to stop it make clean okay so we want some kind of indication that um, that we're actually like making progress, right? So what we're gonna do is we're going to have an integer called progress, int progress. We're gonna set it equal to one. Actually, we won't set it equal to anything. And then we're gonna have check puzzle I believe check puzzle returns an integer. It does. So when we've when we've solved something, um, when we've solved the square, check puzzle is going to return one. So in this example, we're looping through all the columns, and here we solve a uh, we we solve something. So we're going to return one. Now that also means that's going to give us a, an additional benefit of here we're looping through rows and columns using our rows and columns trip trick and this only has two for loops okay so the the computational complexity of that isn't too high but our box singles function right here has three for loops so it goes through way more computations so if we never run box singles if we always just use our rows and columns trick then that's okay like I'm okay with that we don't we never get to here we always just get to this point oh we solved something let's return one and that's okay so yeah we might not run this function most of the time I think we will but anyways okay so in this case we're returning one which means we have solved something so we'll go back here and we'll set progress equal to what this function returns so progress equals this. Then we're going to say here, we're going to say if progress is equal to zero, break. Um, now where would we return zero? So let's let's go back to our check puzzle function. So let's say that the rows and columns tricks don't work. They don't give us, they don't solve any squares. Okay, well then we're gonna run this box singles function. Okay, so this box singles also returns an integer. So this is the case right here where we've actually solved something. So here, let's return one. Okay, so if we get to this point, we've, if we get to this where count equals one, we have solved something, we'll return one. 
But if we get through all these for loops and we haven't solved anything, we're going to return zero. So one on success, zero on failure. And then in our check puzzle, um, we can remove this return one. And what we can do is we can just return whatever this box singles returns. Okay. So if we do solve something, this will return one. If we don't, it will return zero. So then in our main loop here, if progress is equal to zero, we're going to break and stop. Um, sorry. Let's also, uh, let's print something here. So print F quote failed to solve the puzzle. Okay, let's run that. Error progress undeclared. Uh, so we'll initialize it to zero, I guess. It doesn't really matter. No? Oh, no, I just misspelled it. Okay, where did I misspell it? Ah, right here. Whoops. Okay, now run that. Okay, so as you can see, it tries to solve it. It keeps going. It does, it solves the same number of steps as we did previously. But then it just gets to a point where it can't solve anymore. And then it exits. So just a short tutorial this time. And we'll get to work on another trick in the next video.